energy balance. So you know that the things that going in is feed, energy, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, I would put it E, energy of feed equal to energy of crystal and plus heat of evaporation. Here, heat of evaporation. So here you have solution, right? That solution is basically uh, is basically coming from the same uh, liquid that part of it become crystal, another part is still in a liquid form. So if you know the heat of solution, basically the heat of crystallization is a minus of, oh sorry, minus of heat solution is equal to heat of crystallization. Okay? So let's say you have like heat of solution is 122 kilojoule per kilogram, something like that. So heat of crystal, crystallization is basically minus 122. It's minus from this one. Okay, so that's why you don't have the solution, but rather than you have the crystallization. So if the information they give you heat of solution, then you just minus it. So it becomes heat of crystallization. Or they straight away give you the crystallization heat, then you just get that uh, value. All right, so then, uh, then from here you get the uh, heat of crystallization plus heat of uh, evaporation if you have water that evaporating. So then if you want to calculate the total heat, the total Q that required, so you need to bring it to that side. So it becomes delta uh, heat of crystallization plus heat of evaporation minus heat of uh, feed, so feed solution that coming in. Okay, so this is the equation to get the total heat. For example, if they're asking you, what is the total heat required or heat removed or heat added? Uh, so this is the equation. You need to know this, this stream, feed, Okay, sometimes the feed they give you like uh, a heat a heat capacity, so MCP delta T, so for sure that you can get uh, to find the, the heat of the feed coming in. And then heat of crystallization is based on the heat of solution, it's a minus. And then this is heat of evaporation. So where to get the heat of evaporation? It's depending on the water. Okay, properties of water, you think of heat of evaporation to berapa nilai dia? So that is the value. If they're having this, uh, water is removed through evaporation okay so this is the energy balance right so kalau kita tengok kat sini okay let's say so i don't want to discuss about this uh, this is the same finally i produce that equation so this is the equation all right so this is the heat of crystallization h2 okay this is crystal uh, this is hv is the one that evaporation evap evaporating and h1 is basically the feed of seed feed. All right, so uh, this is kind of example. I think as this exercise you can get it from Kalam. Okay, they have a list of a, a word document. Okay, in the words, so they have a few uh, example uh, exercise that you can try. All right, so this one, kita tengok eh, macam mana how to solve it. Uh, rough, okay, roughly how to solve it. Okay, finally you the one that need to solve it. Okay, ten thousand. 150 degree uh, Fahrenheit containing 47 pound per 100 pound of total water. Okay, you have like crystallizer and then you have feed 10,000 pound and they give you solubility instead of uh, they give you like uh, before this if you look into this uh, example they give you percentage but now they give you solubility but it's okay solubility it's going to be you're going to apply the same thing all right like you have the in solution 47 pound per 100 pound water right and then what you have uh the cool down 130 to 80 130 degree fahrenheit to 80 Fahrenheit. So the data for temperature is very important because if you want to calculate, for example, the heat balance, so you need that. 
MCP data T, for example, you need that temperature data. For mass balance, no need. Heat balance, yes, you need it. Uh, and then, solubility is formed ferrosulfate 7 H2O. Okay, this is your crystal. And here, you have solution. The solubility is going to be uh, 30.5. Over 100 pound water, all right, and then the average heat capacity they give the heat capacity of feet CP feet is 0.7 BTU over pound mass Fahrenheit, and the heat of solution 4.4. Uh, this is 4.4 kil kilocal. Uh, what the unit gram mole eh? in gram mole? Okay, this is heat of solution. H, H, uh, I will put uh, H solution. Okay, so now untuk buat mass balance, macam biasa, you ada H2O. Okay, dalam case ni, in this case, they mentioned that there is no water uh, vaporized. So, tak ada lah sini, tak ada. W, zero. So, buat balance water. So, you ada 10,000. Okay. Ni, you ada solubility. It's okay. You cari uh, water punya mass berapa? 100. Over total solution is 100 plus 47. Okay, because you have water and also ferrum. Okay, the salt. Uh, the crystal. Equal to crystal. Uh, this is molecular weight of H2O, 7H2O, divided by molecular weight H7, H2O plus ferrum sulfate plus solubility, uh, water is 100, H2O over 100 plus 30.5 and plus W, W is basically 0. Okay, so this is equation 1. Now you move on to the uh, crystal. Okay, crystal is the same, not the same, but another equation. Uh, 10,000, 47 divided by 100 plus 47 and equal to C, molecular weight of ferrum sulfate divided by molecular weight ferrum sulfate plus 7H2O plus solution. Uh, and then the 30.5 divided by 0.5, oh sorry, divided by 100 plus 30.5. Then you get two equations, you solve it. Then you will know that how much is crystal, how much is solution that you're going to obtain. Okay? So I don't want to put on the numbers, so you're the one that you're going to try to solve it. All right, now you know that the Q is equal to H, uh, H2 plus HV minus H1. Where is H1? This is H1. This is H2. This is HV. So, what is H2? H2 is basically a minus of heat of solution. Okay, so it's minus 4.4 Kel per gram mole. Eh? So, gram mole ni you can convert kepada darab kepada molecular weight of ferrum sulfate sebab you kena tukarkan jadi gram mol pasal unit semua kena sama ok this is for H2 ok HB berapa? HB is 0 lah tak ada H1 H1 kat sini H1 you tahulah MCP delta T because they give you CP ok CP dah tahu berapa M dia berapa M dia 10,000 CP is 0 0.7 delta T how much? 130 minus 80. So, you dapat lah untuk H1. So, once you get H1, you get the H2. Okay, H2 you kena tukar jadi molecular, darab dengan molecular weight. And then later on, you kena darab dengan mass of ferrum, uh, crystal that you obtain. Baru you dapat dia punya total heat. Then you can get the Q. Okay, so this is how you want to solve for mass balance and energy balance. Question?
Question? Tak ada. Okay. Alright. So then we're done with the mass energy balance. Alright. So now we move on to, like I mentioned last week, uh, in crystallization, they have two parts. Okay. Uh, first part is basically uh, on the mass energy balance. Another one is on the uh, the crystal. So the crystal, how they how they grow because from the small size and then they grow become bigger and uh, bigger. Uh, so we want to know uh, how much they grow. For example, in uh, cent uh, one centimeter, how long it gonna take? Two hours, three hours, four hours. All right. So that is on the uh, uh, this. Uh, Crystallization theory. All right. So you need to know what is the nucleation because we need to find to calculate the nucleation rate. Okay. Nucleation theory is basically nucleation is a number of new particles formed per unit time per unit volume of mother liquor. Meaning that in one solution, okay, dalam solution yang ada crystal, let's say you have big crystal, okay. Or more bigger and okay, small and big. So you are kind juga part of big crystal ni dia boleh detach, dia detach jadi small crystal yang dia panggil nuclear nucleus. Okay, this nucleus yang akan jadi seed. Okay, we we become a seed so that the crystal will become more bigger and bigger. Okay, sebelum you jadi yang besar. A bigger crystal size is gonna start from the small one that we call it nucleus lah. Okay, nucleus, a new nu nucleus, of, a nucleus, uh, nucleus, and then uh, or the process we call it nucleation, so that you can have like that nucleus, and finally it be it growing become a big crystal. Okay, so we need to know berapa banyak new particles of the nucleus form in each uh, depending on time. All right, so that is our nucleation theory. And you need to know what is the solubility because it's very important in crystallization. Uh, crystal size, so this is what we want to determine. Homogeneous nucleation, meaning that the uh, nucleation is homogeneous. So it's not like heterogeneous. If homo the homogeneous is, uh, the mixing is well mixed. So nucleation, they can uh, have a few theory, for example, uh, with agitation. Okay, you pun ada boleh form of nucleation, boleh enhance the nucleation punya formation. Or formation of nuclear occur in collusion between crystals. So the crystal, of, the crystal among them uh, collide to each other and then uh, detach. Okay, small pieces, a small nucleus that finally will become a seed for a bigger crystal. Right or to due to interference of the contacting agent wall or container or agitator blade. Meaning that kalau ada like for example you ada uh, agitator, so the agitator also in contact with the crystal and then the crystal boleh uh, boleh crush uh, and then they become small pieces. So that small pieces basically also can become a seed for a bigger crystal. Okay, so this is what we want to know. The rate of crystal growth, delta L. Delta L means that let's say if your crystal, the size, uh, the the shape is basically cubical like this, okay, and then it become a big a bigger cubical, okay, the akan uh, naik macam ni, and then we want to know, okay, the punya size ni dia dia membesar tu L tu per time berapa lama? Let's say this is let's say this is one centimeter, so it become bigger to two centimeter. How long? So that is the rate of crystal growth delta L. All right. So I don't want to talk much on the diffusion and so on because we are gonna uh, straight away go to the how you can calculate that. Okay, how you want to determine that? Okay, for to determine uh, the the delta L because delta L over delta T okay delta L meaning that you have L initial okay starting the L or maybe not not initial but final contact jadi negative L final minus L initial meaning that let's say your initial size 
is basically one centimeter and then it become bigger now it become let's say four centimeter so it's going to be four minus one and divide by time let's say this is zero t equal to zero this is t equal to two two hours let's say so four minus one divide by two hours so this is we call it g ataupun dia panggil growth rate okay bila ada over time kita panggil dia growth rate okay how to determine this g growth rate okay delta l is only the uh, the change of uh, the size okay the length delta g if you divide it over time then you be you, you will get the growth rate right so the growth rate okay this is size distribution yeah so you not calculate this cv uh, the coefficient of variation is 100% pd is particle diameter at 60% retain ah ni kena tahulah macam mana you, you want to know that 60% uh, retain and 84% retain and this is 50% retain ah uh, this one later on kita akan tengok how tak mai nak nak jumpa dia where you can find it okay So this is how we want to find the CV. We can question asking about the coefficient, uh, coefficient of variance. So then you know that oh, okay, this is the equation that you need to use, and where to get the 16.84 and 50%. Okay, before we want to know to calculate the G, okay, the growth rate. So there is a model. Okay, the the common model that being used to calculate this G. Okay, because that G cannot just simply calculate like that. So the the common model that being used okay is we call it model model for mixed suspension mixed product removal crystallizer okay macam mana mixed suspension mixed product ni so this is your crystallizer let's say you keluar kan when you remove okay you going to obtain a uh, liquid still there and then crystal still there so it make mixture of liquid and crystal so that's why it, they call it mixed suspension mixed product removal so when you remove the crystal the crystal still have like leak in solution you have the solid in crystal but at the same time you still have solution with them so that's why we call it this model we call it msmpr okay this is the model the, the short form of mixed suspension mixed product removal crystallizer msmpm so this is very known model being used for crystallization especially Okay, so this is this model can be used to predict to predict what the growth rate. Okay, also you can predict your size, alright. Also you can predict your nucleation. Okay, nucleation. Ingat, you can tell the nucleation, nucleation rate or nucleation number. Berapa banyak yang being produced for uh, to become nucleus. Okay, how to 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 use this model and to get that uh, value? Okay, so before that you need to know lah a few. Uh, uh calculation okay a few parameters for example here we need to plot cumulative number of crystal per liter this is we need to know what is the cumulative number of crystal in 1 liter okay let's say this is 1 liter so berapa banyak crystal ada the number of crystal there in 1 liter we need to know okay before we can calculate the g Okay, so this is the crystal size. So macam mana kita nak tahu crystal size? Okay, so the crystal size is basically bila kita dah buat crystallization when we conduct an experiment on producing crystal. So we take the crystal. So because normally the size will be range. Okay, it's not one uniform size. Let's say one mm. Not everyone, each of them going to be one mm. No, it's very difficult to get it. But they can be like eighty percent is one mm. But you still can have like small size and bigger size. So what you need to do when you take up, then you have to take up the crystal, and the crystal you need to sift. Okay, pakai sift, pakai sift tray. Kita panggil sift tray lah. Okay, so what is the function of that sift tray? Ah, uh, sift tray itu dia macam a stack of tray. Ah, uh, okay, sift tray eh, macam mana? Eh? Paling mudah. Okay, paling mudah is like I'm not sure whether ah. Uh, apa ni, do you have it at home or not? So like a sieving, sieving kalau kata some, maybe your parents or your mother want to make like a cake, normally dia akan sieve uh, the flour, so that you're going to have like a very fine flour. And then the the bigger size, you, you will not use it. Alright, so that is a sieve. Example of sieve. Another one is, 
very simple you can ada oh, tak boleh lah teh tu dah sekarang modern kan kalau dulu teh ok dia buat teh masuk daun teh alright they, they put the tea leaf and then you have that uh, a filter a small filter sieve so you will will filter the leaf and also the uh, tea of course the tea water so you can drink the tea and then the leaf you can remove so that is a simple sieve so here we have like commercial in the lab scale uh, sieve tray we call it sieve tray whereby uh, uh, apa ni whereby here you have like a stage a staging of that tree so this they're going to be like staging together but the mesh sizes is different like say this is a a core size core size up there little bit smaller size here and then this is a much more smaller this is very fine okay what happen you're going to put your crystal here and then they're going to be vibrate okay shaking shaking or vibrate so when they vibrate so the smaller size will pass through until here whatever the size of the mesh and then the little bit bigger will will retain here up here and much more bigger will retain here all right so from here you can take out each of the section and then you just can weigh it okay because that is going to be following their size okay this one okay when you take out each of them we call it uh you can refer to uh what we call it taylor series okay where is this taylor series ah, this one taylor standard screen scale series so this is you can get it from appendix from your textbook in the appendix so each sieve okay let's say they, they say that okay my i use sieve of 14 mesh and i use another one 16 mesh and another another, another one is 20 mesh something like i have a staging staging, uh, staging of uh, stacking of this uh, sieve tray so this one probably uh, 14 mesh uh, this one is 16 mesh and this one is 20 mesh so maybe i have another one that gonna this is collector okay so this is 16 mesh we're referring to what size so this is the opening size so which one you can choose this one inchi or mm so what's the meaning of inchi or mm here okay if you take one of the sieve okay this is like uh, the uh, the view from the top okay so the sieve is something like this they have like mesh okay okay the mesh size of here is basically referring to the opening okay that opening is basically this size okay 1.168 okay each of them here so that mesh have this size so the size is referring to this one to this table so if you have 16 mesh so this is the size of that uh, mesh okay All right so and then it depends what what mesh that are you you are using so if you look here as the mesh size is increasing okay the number is getting bigger so the opening be getting smaller much more fine so meaning that if you have like bigger mesh number meaning that your size is going to be split, uh, much more smaller a very fine size all right so this is where you can get uh, uh the the corresponding size huh? the crystal size distribution because you need to know this okay in order for you uh, to get the growth rate and the rest okay the, the other calculation so the method okay uh, to use that model m mps mix mix suspension ms mpr is basically you need to plot the graph okay plot graph macam mana so you akan dapat graph macam ni ln n versus l the length and then you, you plot the graph you get linear line and then you you get slope you get intercept here so that slope and intercept will give some parameters some meaning of it okay and how to plot this one you need to know this uh, this is the Taylor series from Taylor series you have match match size and so on because normally when you take the crystal you need to screen uh, to see it to become a few size from that size then you can calculate a few things before you can plot it okay but once you plot then you get intercept when you get slope then you can obtain your for example here the g and you have n naught nucleation and you have the b all right so you have a few things that you can determine later on 
uh, by plotting it. Okay, boleh can you, are you clear with it? How to finally how you can solve that problem by having the uh, graph from the graph then you can obtain certain slope and so on. Then from there you can determine the G and L and so on. Okay. You get it? This is in general how the method for this uh, MSMPR in your model lah. mix suspension, mix product, removal, crystallizer model. Everyone clear? This one? Oh, you have a question? You may ask. So, I'll answer you all. Apa yang you faham? Oh, ada orang tak? Okay, saya tanyalah. Let me ask question. To to know that whether you understand or not. Okay, before that, I just uh, carry on dulu dengan ni. Okay, so then uh, untuk... To get this uh, cumulative number from this slope, okay, uh, cumulative number versus crystal size, when you plot this uh, graph, basically you you will not plot this one, okay. This is just uh, the method how to get the n, okay, the small n, okay. The small n is basically referring to uh, this one is referring to number of crystal. How to get the number of crystal? Because it's very difficult, right? To get the number of crystals in one liter, you add one liter. Okay, you have one liter of uh, liquid. And then you want to know berapa banyak ada dalam ni? The numbers of crystal. It's very difficult. So that's why when you plot that graph, graph of this one, cumulative and also crystal size, from the slope, you can get this one. So this is called dn over dl. Kalau you ada data tu lah. And then you can get the number of crystal. Okay, the population density is obtained experimentally by screen analysis. Sebab kita apa, kenapa kita kena tahu nombor of crystal? Pasal finally kita nak calculate, uh, tapi uh, another method tadi daripada apa ni, because N ni, kalau you tengok graph dia, you dah dapat N, you kena plot ln ln N kat sini. Okay, kita tengok balik sini, ln N. So, it's a ln of number of crystal. Okay, you kena tahu number of crystal baru you boleh buat dia punya lon. Lon senang je, dah ada nombor, dah ada value, then you just lon je. Okay, tapi sebelum nak dapat nombor tu, dia ada dua cara. They have two methods. One is, if you know this uh, data of cumulative number crystal versus crystal size, from the slope, you can get the N, or they have another method. Okay, method dia macam mana? Menggunakan density. Okay, macam mana dapat density? Okay, simple. First, you need to know the L average. L average meaning that what is the initial, what is the second punya uh, another crystal size. For example, initial is 1 and then they go to 2 mm. From 1 mm, go to 2 mm. So, average is 1 plus 2 divided by 2 lah. Simple lah, L average. From that L average, you also need to know the delta L. Delta L is basically 2 minus 1 lah. Final and minus initial. And then you need to know the volume of particle. How to know the volume particle? Berdasarkan constant shape factor lah. Uh, ni dia akan bagi. Depends pada crystal type. Okay. Constant shape factor. Uh, uh, sorry. So, constant shape, uh, shape uh, factor. So, berdasarkan L average. So, this L average, you just power 3. Kalau you power 3, you dapat apa? Volume. Alright. So, you dapat volume. So, volume times dengan factor. Uh, kadang dia tengok shape dia, shape dia adalah uh, cubicle ke ataupun tetrahedral and so on so dia akan ada nilai A tu ok, knowing the total weight of the uh, uh, crystal in the this fraction, the density and the weight of each crystal which ok, you nak dapatkan weight ok, you akan dapat uh, rho times uh, volume ok, you know that volume is meter cube Rho is basically kg over meter cube. So, you can get the mass. Alright, you dapat mass. Alright. So, when you dapat mass, you boleh calculate 
the number of uh, crystal number of crystal based on the size range maknanya ok number dia adalah number of crystal delta n divided by delta l uh, so this method permit the calculation of n for each fraction collected in each screen with the average uh, size ok so you akan dapat mass ni you akan bahagikan dengan length ok setiap length tu you akan dapat lah nanti nilai n nanti kita akan tengok example dia how they use this uh, uh, row and v ok to get the number of size you need to get this n small n value then then you can calculate log n finally you can plot lah ok so yang you plot tu apa ok the one that you plot is basically this one ok yang atas apa bawah ni adalah derivation ni lah ok I don't want to touch on that alright so you can read on your own but the uh, equation or the linear equation that you want to plot is basically ln n equal to minus L divided by G tau plus ln n naught. Okay. N naught is basically population of nuclei. L is basically your, your length lah. N, here N is population yang kita calculate number tadi. Uh, v, uh, VQ is up there lah kita tak pakai. Alright. So tau here is basically resident time in crystallize, crystallizer. Berapa lama dia spend masa dalam crystallizer? Satu jam, dua jam, tiga jam. Alright. So don't worry about L and G here. Okay, G here. But G ni you boleh dapat nanti daripada. Okay, this is uh, intercept. So this going to be because L is the one that going to plot. So 1 over G tau. 1 over G tau is basically your slope. Okay slope tu nanti akan dapat you punya G value ok uh, on top of that once you get the G value of G then you can calculate this one average particle size average particle size you just use this equation lah 3.67 G tau or you can calculate 50% of mass of product is smaller than uh, berapa yang apa ni, smaller or larger than 50% so you also can use this equation once you get the G value lah and then uh, if if you want to find B okay B is another one we call it nucleation rate so nucleation rate maknanya a nucleus tu proper uh, depending on time so how fast the nucleation happen alright so this is a B naught lah B naught equal to G G yang the, you, the one that you determine from the graph times dengan n not n not tu you pun boleh dapat daripada graph nanti alright so so another one you boleh juga calculate predict, prediction of cumulative weight per fraction obtained so ni apa ok ni basically nah, kita tengok example lah baru you boleh faham benda ni ok so but this is the equation lah alright example ok you nak calculate so here they want you to calculate the population density and nucleation growth rate Nucleation growth rate maknanya B not lah. Uh, and also of course G for crystal sample. Okay so what they do is uh, the crystal, they buat screen analysis. So this is the result from screen analysis eh. Uh, screen analysis dia pakai mesh. Dia buat screening, mesh. So mana nak dapat 40 ni represent apa, 20 ni represent apa. Even though you have minus and plus ni, don't worry about minus and plus because it's the same. Okay it's going to be like mesh 14, this is mesh 20. So this is mesh 20, mesh 28. Alright. So even they put it minus. So the minus you just omit it. Alright. So the salary density they give you. The salary density is 450 gram per liter. Berapa density dia. The crystal shape factor is 1. Okay. Crystal shape factor is basically A lah. The crystal density rho is 1.335. Alright. And the resident time tau is 3.38. Okay. The screen analysis below lah. So this is weight percent. Macam tu nak dapat weight percent ni? Ah okay. This is like this. Bila dia buat screen analysis tu. Okay dia pakai sieving ni. So yang ni, ni adalah different size lah. Let's say this is size 14. This is size 20. This is size 20, 28. This is 35. This is 48. So what happen is that. Kat sini yang retain. Uh, Kristal yang retain adalah 4.4%. Okay, dia ambil, bila dia dah finish, complete di uh, sieving punya proses, dia ambil. So, dia measure 4.4%. So, this one pun ada, 
ada kristal so dia ambil the major dia adalah 14.4% alright so this part yang bawah ni the major 24.2 so this is 31.36 and then so on lah so this is how they producing this table okay it's important to know how uh, to establish this table because if if you don't so it's you do not know where to start probably okay so referring to this teller series because we want to know what is the meaning uh, the size of 14 16 20 and uh, what uh, 28 35 the one that they use until 100 here all right so we want to know what is the opening size so once you get that uh, that teller series so need to establish table paling mudah buat table table macam mana Okay, this is the mesh. Ingat, you ada 14. You ada minus 14, you ada plus 20 kan. You letak side by side kat sini. And then, sebelah mesh ni, you put dia punya L. Dia punya opening. So, mana dapat opening ni? Daripada Taylor series lah. Yang tadi tu kita refer. 14 berapa nilai dia? 20 berapa nilai dia? Kita tengok balik eh. 14, 1.168 dengan 20. 14. Kita, I delete dulu. This one. Okay, this is 14, the size is 1.168 and then you have another one 20, the size is 0 0.833. Don't worry, we even, even though they tak ada 16, could they skip some of match? Don't worry, because this is how they put the sieve. Sieve tray tu terpulang pada dia lah, nak pakai size apa. Not necessary, they kena ikut sequence. Lepas 14, 16, no, not necessary, okay. They can put like 14 and then after that you want to put 25, no problem, right? So you just follow je lah data dia. Okay, so then 20 is 0 0.833. Ha, ni adalah mm lah. Kalau you nak pakai inci pun boleh pakai. So again, you put yang 20, 30, uh, 28. You follow je dia punya. Uh, this one. Follow je arrangement dia ni. And from there, you letak lah setiap dia punya opening. Okay, so once you put the opening, you, you need to establish your L average. Remember that to get the number of uh, crystal uh, number of crystal you can add L average alright so macam mana dapat L average ni L average this one plus this one divide by 2 maknanya 1.168 plus 0 0.833 bahagi dengan 2 so you dapatlah nilai kat sini buat semua sekali sampai yang kat sini lah <coughs> ok 65 <coughs> after that you also need to know the delta L uh, delta L is basically uh, 1.168 minus 0 0.833 then you get the delta L ok once you get L average and delta L uh, nanti kita akan guna untuk calculate N sebenarnya dari N kat sini okay, you have N and then after that you learn kan that N okay, macam mana dapat N? alright this is dia bagi example you already buat table tu based on the appendix F5 yang tele series so let's say kita ambil example mesh 14 28 14 to 28 kalau kita tengok kat sini 14 to 28 you have 4.4 percent ini eh 14 to 28 you have 4.4 percent ok macam mana nak buat ok L average adalah mm, daripada table tadi 1.168 plus 0.833 bahagi 2 so you get 1.001 Delta L 1.168 minus 0 0.833 equal to 0 0.335. Okay. So L average untuk untuk this mesh range is 1.01. So you nak dapatkan dia punya uh, volume. Nak dapat volume macam mana? Uh, factor, shape factor times dengan L average power 3. Uh, ni refer balik yang kat sini. Uh, we refer back to this... Uh, uh, this one ok Alah, kita, kita kita pergi terus kat sini nanti saya pergi patah balik nanti you pening ok so dia bagikan dengan uh, dia times shape factor tadi dia bagi tahu 1 and the L average power 3 is 1.0 power 3 so you get the this is volume ok so to get mass volume times dengan density so this is density this is volume so what happen is that uh, density dia bagi 1.335 and the volume is 1003 so you get the mass is this one 1.339 times 10 minus 3 
Okay, untuk dapatkan total mass, okay, total mass, you know that the density is 450 gram per liter. Okay, dia, dia bagi 450 gram per liter, the slurry density. So, you just times dengan dia punya weight fraction. Weight fraction, weight fraction ni tadi ada 4.4% kan? So, dalam total fraction, it's going to be 0 0.044 lah. So, once you time that, you get the total mass of crystal. Alright? So, this is mass of particle. Just imagine you ada mass of crystal, total mass. Semua ni, crystal ni, you tahu dia punya mass. Okay? And then, setiap crystal tu, what is the mass? Uh, this is mass of particle, mass of crystal lah. One crystal tu, berapa mass dia? Then, you bagilah total mass. Bagi dengan one crystal tu berapa size, uh, berapa mass dia. Then you get uh, the number of N. Okay, ataupun kat sini dia buat 450 gram times dengan word fraction. Ni you dapat total mass. Alright, total mass. You divide dengan yang ni. Uh, ni sorry, this one. Mass of particle. Uh, this is formula of mass particle lah. Semua dia combine kan. So you dapat N adalah number of crystal adalah 4.41 times 10 power 4. Okay, so that is, you letaklah kat sini, dekat table you, you ada satu ni. 4 point, what is the, 4 1, 4 1, 10 power 4. Alright, so this is N lah. Then continue buat yang lain-lain. Alright, once you get the N, you loan kan dia. Loan kan dapat loan N. Okay, so then kita tengok yang sec, I think dia bagi uh, second. Okay, lepas tu you dah dapat N. You loan kan N tu. Loan 4.41, you dapat 10.695. Uh, Alright. So, kat sini dah dia letak dalam table tu. 10.695. Okay. Then you continue for the second uh, match. 20 to 28. Buat yang sama. So, you get like N is 5.535. And finally, you complete kan semua sekali ni lah. Okay, kat sini you put lah dia punya percent tadi, 4.4, 14.4, you just salin balik, copy back. Okay, just to ensure that you have the correct number. And then, you plot L0, uh, ln N dengan L. Okay, dengan L ni, L mana nak pakai? L average ke, dah letak L? Of course lah. Ataupun, uh, L average ataupun L, you pakai L yang kat sini. Right, this L. Not L average. Okay, so then you plot LN versus L. Okay, so when you plot, you dapat ni lah. Okay, you plot this one versus this is L. Pasal L ni referring terus kepada dia punya, eh, sorry. L ni referring kepada dia punya size terus. Alright, so then you plot lah. Lon N dengan L. Then you dap dapat dia punya point, then you you draft dia punya uh, linear line, then you get slope, and you get intercept. So from this one, you tahu that you ada equation of that line is ln equal to uh, this one lah. Okay, so this one is basically, this adalah uh, intercept, ini adalah slope. So you know that this slope, minus 9.12 is equal to minus L over G tau ataupun 1 over G tau lah L dah tak ada lah ok ln N not is equal to 19.79 so you just NT ok NT ln so you get the N not right ni dia dah soft kan lah so slope minus 9.12 equal to minus 1 over G tau so tau is 3.38 so G is this one the growth rate is 0 0.032 millimeter per hour. Just imagine the crystal growing 0.03 millimeter per hour. Uh, so this is the, the value lah. And then intercept long end is 19.79. So end not is going to be 3.3. Uh, you just anti anti long. So you get that one. So B not. B not times G not over N. So G you are sorry. Uh, G times N not eh. Alright. G dah tahu ni. 0.3244 times dengan N naught so you get the nucleation rate is this one so maknanya 1.27 nuclei per hour per liter ok average size kalau ditanya about average size 
LA is 3.67 times G tau, you masuk je lah. G berapa, tau berapa. So you get every size, maknanya you punya crystal tu uh, on average, the size is going to be 0.4 mm. Okay? And predominant size uh, from equation uh, predominant size, maknanya size yang uh, this one is, mana yang predominant? Predominant meaning that size yang banyak. Kalau average, average lah. But predominant size yang paling banyak sekali adalah 0.329 adalah size yang paling banyak sekali dalam punya crystal. Okay. So that is how lah. To solve uh, apa ni. To get the G. To get the B naught. To get the average size. To get the predominant size. Okay soalan. soalan. Ok, kalau kita tengok in class exercise ni uh, ok so dia ada uh, dia gunakan MSMPR crystallizer utilized to produce magnesium sulfate uh, crystal alright, so experimental data obtained was presented in table 1 uh, dia dah bagi table 1 ni, dia ada mesh, dia ada weight percent ok, so sama macam example tadi Okay, so if the salary density, salary density is, the rho is 169, the salary density, so the crystal density 1.65, the resident time is 6.57, shake factor is 0.98, okay, determine, okay, A dia adalah 0.98 lah. Determine population density, growth rate, nucleation rate, benda yang sama lah, maknanya you can determine G, Uh, N naught, B naught and so on and calculate calculated value predict the cumulative uh, weight pressure uh, versus uh, ni lain uh, ini saya, sekejap lagi saya, saya go through on the predict the cumulative weight fraction compare the predicted and experimental value ok kalau dia tanya if they asking about the predicted eh, uh, they asking about this one prediction of cumulative weight fraction obtained you boleh pakai equation ni apa you, what you need to do is that graph tadi tu okay, that graph you ada uh, mesh tadi mesh 14, 20 and so on and then you ada dia punya percent weight percent eh 4.4 lepas tu you ada berapa tadi uh, boleh ni eh ni 4.4, 14.4, 24.2 And then you have 31 .6, 31 .6, 15 .5, 7 .4, and 2 .5. So here, this is experimental. This is experimental. They obtain the experiment, then they put the value. So what is the meaning of predi predi prediction of cumulative? So here, you can do one more. Cumulative weight percent. Cumulative, how do 4.4, dia akan tambah dengan 14.8, so dia jadi berapa? Uh, uh, 18.8, so 18.8 tambah dengan 24.2, 24.2 you get 24, 1, 43.0 plus 31.6, you get 6, uh, 4, 74.6, so you add on dengan 15.5, you get Hmm, 31.1 so seterusnya lah you tambah finally you akan dapat 100% kat sini for sure alright kalau tak dapat 100% you kena normalisekan balik semua ni jadi 100% katalah you dapat total ni uh, 90, uh, 97% 97 lah dia punya persen so you kena normalisekan you kena normalisekan maknanya everyone ni bahagikan dengan 97 so finally you akan dapat 100% alright Alright, so what's the function of this prediction of cumulative? So kat sini you kena uh, buat, kena calculate 1 minus WF ni. Berapa dia punya value? But this value akan compare dengan cumulative of weight percent here. Dia akan compare. And then from there you can get the percent error. But dia nak tengok berapa banyak error dia compare dengan, this is theory and this is experiment. 
this one experiment. So do you want to know theoretically how much the error if you compare with the uh, experimental that you run. So macam mana pakai ni? So E, this is exponential minus X. So X, is, this is the value of X, L divided by G tau. So L ni depend by the mesh size lah. Alright? Kalau you ambil mesh size yang 14, so uh, 1.16 punya mm lah. So you masuklah nilai dia. So X pun sama here, X pun sama, X pun sama. So masuk yang ni je lah nilai ni, X ni. Then you get the 1 minus WF untuk that particular size, size ni. Size 20 pun sama, buatlah. And then you dapat, you boleh comparekan dia punya error. So this is how you want to solve if they're asking about the prediction of cumulative weight percent. Okay, then uh, kita tengok exercise ni tadi. Okay, uh, okay dah. Dia dah bagi ni semua. Tadi dia ada bagi. Sorry, that's the 450. Okay, so that's the 1335. So, kat mana guna? Okay, dekat mass. Alright. So, how to solve this one? Sama je. You kena uh, establish table for sure. Macam yang tadi tu. So, you ada mesh. You ada L. So, you ada mesh. You ada L. So, what is the mesh? 14, 20. So, 28. 28, 35. Apa dia dia? 35. 48 48 65 65 100 Okay, so mana dapat dia punya ni? Tengok daripada Taylor series Okay, 14 14 uh, 1.1 Eh, tengok kat sini 1.168 20 is 0.833 0 0.833 28 going to be 0.58 dan seterusnya lah lepas tu you buat lah delta you buat apa sini uh, L average delta L L average delta L and then you calculate N you dah calculate N you calculate ln N itu sebenarnya you punya weight percent lah. So macam mana nak dapat? L data L tak tahulah macam mana kat sini. N ni gunakan balik this uh, example. Tengok balik example ni how they calculate. Alright, this one. Okay, you just use this one. Cari, cari dia punya data L dengan L uh, average. Get the uh, volume. Once you get the volume, get the mass of particle. One particle tu berapa. And find the total mass of all the crystal and then you just divide lah. So basically, nak dapat N tu adalah uh, total mass particle divided by mass of particle. Okay, banyak, banyak bagi dengan satu particle. So dapat number. Okay, so then you get this one. I, I don't want to calculate for you because you the one that going to do the exercise. Right? So then once you get that one, then you plot lah. Finally, you can plot. Uh, plot. Kata lah you plot. Ln N versus L. So, you get a few points and plot. So, you get the intercept here and you get the slope. Uh, you can then from there, you can get your variable lah G and so on. Okay. Untuk yang predicted. Uh, sebab dekat sini ada tanya yang predict, predict cumulative uh, weight fraction. Okay, so daripada table yang tadi you buat tu, you extend lah sikit. You boleh je extend table yang sama, you buat lah cumulative weight percent yang kat sini. 4.4, uh, tambah lah semua ni. 18, uh, 19, uh, 30 or 43 and so on lah you tambah ni. Lepas tu you buat kat sini, 1 minus WF. Okay, berapa? Kira, tu setiap size. Dan you compare lah dia punya error. Ada soalan? Question? Tak ada soalan saya tanya you. Uh, sorry doktor. Ya yeah, please. Uh, saya tak dapat nak tangkap yang error tadi tu. 
error. Ha. Uh-huh. Okey, error tu basically you dah ada dah eh, saya publish balik. Saya tak pergi yang uh, table-table depan tu, saya pergi yang belakang ni. Pergi okay, wait percent. Alright. Uh, lepas tu you buat cumulative weight percent. This is experimental eh. Yang they give you. They give you weight value. Tadi you ada 4.4, you ada 14.6, you ada lain-lain lah. You, you cumulative ni you tambah lah cumulative. 4.4 tambah dengan yang ni you dapat hmm, katalah I letak ialah nilai dia. 21, uh, 16, 10, let's say. So 4.4 tambah 14.6 you, you dapat Uh, 19 lepas tu tambah 21 sini dapat 14 nanti tambah 16 uh, 56 you tambah 10 you dapat um, 66 katalah you ada lagi nombor-nombor ni tapi saya tambah sampai sini je dulu and then you calculate 1 minus WF ha, ni tahu kan guna equation yang tadi tu lah 1 minus WF is basically this one Okay, so you calculate untuk each size, each L tu. Sebab dia ada Y minus WF equal to E times X, apa benda lah. So X is, is basically L divided by tau, apa eh, I can't remember. Uh, uh, L divided by G tau. G tau. So L ni akan represent dekat setiap mesh ni lah. Okay, match 14 ke apa, you ambil nilai dia. So, you dah dapat nilai dia kat sini. And then, you boleh calculate percent error. Okay, macam mana nak tahu percent error ni? Percent error ni is this one compared to this one. This one compared to this one. Let's say you, you dapat ni uh, 4. Okay, macam mana nak tahu error dia? It's based on experimental. This is theory eh. So, theory 4 minus 4.4 divided by 4 lah dapat lah persen error. Walaupun dia minus tapi you janganlah buat minus. So dia akan dapat persen lah. So 0.4 bagi 4. Itu berapa persen? This is persen error untuk yang size ni. Yang ni pula berapa persen? Untuk setiap. Untuk dapatkan persen error. So from the persen error then we know that how close the experimental yang kita run tu compared to theoretical. Prediction cumulative secara theoretical. Boleh? Okay, dah tak boleh dah. Alright. Hmm. Ada lagi soalan? Tak ada. Okey, kalau tak ada soalan, saya tanya soalan. Okey, saya bagi you masa uh, 20 minit untuk try buat exercise. Okey. Now you do it the exercise. Ke dia, ke dia yang dah buat? Ada yang dah buat tak exercise tu? Siapa yang dah buat? Can someone respond to me? Siapa yang dah buat exercise ni? Tak ada. Aduh, membazir je saya letak dalam kalam tu untuk you all buat exercise. Lepas tu finally tak buat buat pun. Of course lah exercise yang sebelum ni crystallization ke yang absorption pun memang tak buat kot. I believe ada beberapa orang. I, I think that just a few of you yang do it and then uh, PM me uh, privately and asking uh, 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 they are doing well or not about the uh, solution. Uh, then I advise lah, okay ni kat sini salah, kat sini betul, so on, kalau betul, betul lah. So nampaknya uh, mungkin lima dalam 60 orang yang yang buat je, yang lain tak buat. Bagus, good, 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 good start for week 5. Week 4, sorry, week 4. So jangan harap you nak dapat A. Sebab apa saya minta you buat, you tak buat. So very simple. So you know that the teachers when they they said that you can't only dapat A then you tak dapat A. Tak ada keberkatan. So when I said that you please do it kalau you nak dapat keberkatan if you want to get the rahmat from my lecture, my knowledge, please do the exercise. 
If you don't do the exercise, we, you will not get A. Trust me. Tenang je, I cakap. Kalau you tak buat exercise tu, okay, I pun tak tahu you faham tak faham. So, I will tulah you. I will say that you will not get A. Kalau you buat, you akan dapat lah. InsyaAllah you akan dapat. Okay, trust me. Because the teacher when they sit like that, you're going to be like, boleh, boleh kata, boleh, boleh jadilah. Ha, kalau you tak buat, memang you akan terima lah. You tak dapat A tu, you, you, you akan ingat balik apa saya cakap. You will remember what I'm saying today. Alright? Kalau you nak dapat keberkatan, okay, from whatever that I teach you, from week 1 until week 4, please do all the exercise. Kalau tak buat, you tak akan dapat A. Trust me. It's very simple. Okay, so then I think I will uh, end up this uh, session. So because we finish with crystallization, you pun tak banyak soalan pun, pasal you tak buat pun. Sebab tu you tak, tak ada benda nak tanya. So I expect that when you do the exercise during the class, you're going to ask a lot of question. Mungkin you start somewhere, you start kat sini. Ataupun you dah buat, you ask me, betul ke tak betul ni? Okay, ataupun saya salah, ataupun my understanding is wrong. That is my expectation. But until week 4, my, uh, my expectation nampaknya sangat-sangat tak betul lah dengan you all. Jadi saya, I put this statement, if you don't do exercise, you will not get A. Simple. Okay, so I will end up the session. I hope you, from the time, uh, the remaining time that we have here, because it's 11.22, so suppose that we finish at 12, even we start a little bit late, you can do the exercise, try on your own, anything, if you don't understand, you can WhatsApp me personally, or Telegram me personally, okay? So, if you don't do the exercise, you will not get A. That's all. Alright, so thank you very much. See you next week. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, doctor.